Thank you very much. Uh, just to say that uh, we are coming here as a cluster, a security cluster accompanying uh, the Minister of uh, Environmental Affairs, and to also indicate to you that, as you know, the Minister of uh, Environmental Affairs is part of the security cluster whenever a need arises for us to discuss issues such as uh, poaching of rhino horns and so on. She then is invited to the meetings and briefs us on a, occasionally about, about, about what is happening in this area. But also to indicate that uh, the fight against rhino, as was decided by government, cannot be a matter for one government department. It is indeed a security cluster matter to a point where when really the, the numbers of poaching were very, very high. As a security cluster, we came together as both the ministers and our teachers and developed a strategy together led by environmental affairs about what needed to be done to try and clean down on this stage. So that is the reason why you see us sitting here as a cluster. And of course, at some point, the minister will make a statement, and after that statement, somewhat, the minister of police will then take over and brief you about arrests which have been made. And hopefully by then, I know that there's somebody from MPA or from Justice, we will also be able to provide you with a number, the rates of conviction. Um, and the numbers, and I hope by, by, that, by the time we get there, the person from justice will be here with us. Once more, welcome, and thank you for coming to this briefing on a Sunday afternoon. Minister Omochi. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister Mapisa Makuda and uh, Minister Nteko, uh, team members from SSA, from uh, Sun Parks, and uh, from the Justice uh, Department has even been introduced and other uh, no. supporting departments. And welcome to all of you, ladies and gentlemen from the media. Good afternoon, South Africans. First of all, I just need to say that, uh, just to um, emphasize on the matter raised by Minister Mapisa Ngapula, who is our chairperson of the uh, security cluster in, in government and obviously as we operating and the report that we're giving you today and giving to South Africans is really around work that's been done by that collective as obviously led by the Department of Environment in terms of implementation but planning and operation is around the cluster itself. We are here today ladies and gentlemen to say to you and to talk to you as a collective as you know that uh, in dealing with this matter, it's really a nation that's at work. We are working together also with other uh, stakeholders outside the government. But also to say to you that uh, we have decided that these important matters that are to be known by South Africans and to South Africans, we will actually report on an ongoing basis to yourselves the first report that we did for this year was done on the, in January, and the second report was tabled in May. This is now your third report of the third quarter. We have decided that we'll do as we, much as we can to focus on quarterly reports where we can. Uh, and the nature of this challenge, ladies and gentlemen, requires our collective efforts as government working with private sector, with communities, with civil society, as well as business, in order to ensure that the, the strategy or the approach that Minister Mapisa Ngapula referred to, which we have adopted as cabinet of South Africa, which is an integrated strategic management approach, is successful not only in South Africa, but also within Africa and the rest of the world. We have previously given you the number of rhinos that we carry, that are finding home in South Africa, still the highest number and we'll come to that point later on and therefore it's important that we do this work for the world and emphasize that the work we are doing is indeed benefiting the entire world. 
And I want to thank our friends from the media who have made time to be here today, uh, especially on a Sunday. We regard the media as our partners, please know that. We will make it possible for our stakeholders and the public at large to be kept abreast uh, of the information and indeed the efforts that we are making as government. It is the people of South Africa who have entrusted uh, us with the protection of Rhino. It is a responsibility that we do not take lightly, ladies and gentlemen. And we know that we can only be successful if we can mobilize all South Africans to support us. At this point in time, I want to reiterate what we always say, that we really appreciate what South Africans are doing and really the entire support. And we equate this, by the way, with what uh, people did in South Africa during the World Cup 2010. People are acting together. Uh, we are then going to be talking to you about what's on the, uh, the, 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 um, the board here. What is it called? Screen. The screen. <laughs> what's on the screen here? The interventions that you see on the screen are interventions that have been adopted by government and they all fall under what we call national and international interventions and cooperation with other uh, people throughout the country and internationally. In other words, that's an overarching um, area of work or all encompassing nationally, internationally, but cooperation and, uh, and intervention. The first one of those is the compulsory intervention, as you can see on the screen, that which we have been implementing. And we'll say something around that work uh, in particular. And the second one is the interventions to increase the rhino numbers. Because it's quite important that we don't sit back and, and, and not do anything to really increase our numbers uh, of rhino uh, population. We did previously speak to you about South Africans, about the work that we did when we were almost near extinct of Rhino, the work that was led by uh, our late Dr. Ian Player, may his soul rest in peace, to actually bring us to the numbers that we have today. So based on that rich knowledge, we are continuing, therefore, to deal with interventions that are intended to increase the numbers, more or less falling within the same categories as Dr. Ian Player was leading the country back then. The third area is within the long-term sustainability interventions and the last one is game-changing interventions as you see them uh, on the screen. So with regards to compulsory interventions, the first area, sub-area of work that we are doing is anti-poaching compulsory interventions. Ladies and gentlemen, our anti-poaching efforts are being undertaken in the face of a 27% increase in poachers entering the Cuba National Park to attempt to kill rhinos, an increase of 27%. And this we have actually done to calculate those. And so far we are saying during 2015, there have been 1,617 positively identified poacher activities. In other words, poachers that went into Cuba National Park to attempt to poach rhinos, identified. And this implies that three excursions, uh, sorry, incursions uh, occur per day anywhere along a thousand kilometers, the thousands of kilometers uh, long Kruger National Park border. As you know that that borderline uh, is actually very long. Uh, so the three uh, incursions is uh, related to the number of the poachers because they usually, if not always, move in groups of three. So we're giving you that there have been uh, those, I mean, uh, just illustrated that three of them that uh, are, exist per day along this uh, thousand kilometer long uh, Kruger National Park border. And this means that there are 12 active poacher groups at any given time, somewhere on the two million hectare uh, of the Kruger National Park. It's big. At 12 at any given time, groups at any given time. We are demonstrating this and we are illustrating this fact for you to actually know as South Africans that the problem of people attempting to 
uh, poach our rhinos is increasing and has been increasing. We know that for a fact because those have been positively identified. And that is why rangers made physical contact with heavily armed poachers 95 times so far only in this year. And, and close to the three times a week that actually happens. Ladies and gentlemen, as you see from the slides that will be beamed later on and as we continue, it is our rangers who are making that critical difference. And our teams, not only rangers by the way, the security teams also with police intervention amongst them, SSA, the security, other securities of, uh, that are working together in this field, that are making this critical difference uh, and the poachers, uh, difference in the poaching of our rhinos. We are saying here that were it not or for them and for the work that they have been doing, the numbers would have been far, far higher as demonstrated in the incursions that we have seen entering. And to illustrate the escalation of the threats, let me remind you that for the whole 2014, there were 111 contacts with heavily armed poachers. That's in the Kuba National Park. And in response to this escalated threat, we have stepped up our efforts, which includes traditional anti-poaching policing strategies. And in this regard, the utilization of your canine units, night capabilities, as well as air and land capability is now beginning to bear fruit. We reported that about two years ago, we didn't have these mechanisms <coughs> and the strong coordination. Now, the strong coordination that has been put in place is actually begin, beginning to bear fruit. And the total number of arrests inside Kruger National Park was 138 <coughs> for this year, compared to 81 arrests for the same period last year as at the 27th of August 2015. We can see that even in terms of the arrests, the numbers are increasing. In other words, again, just have a picture in your mind that if it had not been for the fact that those people would have been arrested, what else would have happened to them? Because some are being arrested and actually be destabilized uh, to, to a large extent. Uh, we are particularly Sorry, I'm saying and a good example of the outcome of our increased effort was during this month of July when 35 arrests were made in the Kruger National Park alone. We are particularly proud, ladies and gentlemen, of the work that's done by our law enforcement agencies. For instance, this cooperation led to the arrest of eight poachers in the extended operation uh, over 24 hours only that has recently taken place on the south of the Kruger National Park as part of what you call Operation Southern Comfort. Don't think about the Southern Comfort that you know, but this is another kind of operation. Uh, two heavily, uh, heavy caliber rifles, ammunition, and poaching equipment were seized during that particular operation of a 24-hour uh, uh, period. Coming to the intensive protection zone, ladies and gentlemen, we reported earlier this year, and even in January, and probably even starting from last year, that we are going to be doing the zoning approach in the Kruger National Park for purpose of really focusing much more intensively on some of the areas which were under threat at the time and that continued to be under threat. We are now reporting that the intensive protection zone concept is progressing uh, very well, and we have now reached a stage where night airborne reaction with well-equipped anti-poaching rapid response forces is being implemented. And this really is a unique world-class capability for a park. In this regard, the Kruger National Park has received a donation of the top of a range monocular night vision equipment that's valued to the tune of 3.4 million rand from the Peace Park Foundation to support the range of pops. And this we're mentioning for you to understand and know that we do work with other people like the Peace Park Foundation as we welcome the support that we're given throughout by all other external people from government. And the receipt of this uh, equipment has contributed to a leveling of the playing field as poachers become more and more sophisticated. As they become more and more sophisticated, we are also leveling the, the playing field. We used to say that we do understand that we are actually fighting a very heavily armed and organized 
uh, world uh, syndicate. So we are now leveling the playing field. The night vision has become the key uh, optoelectronic uh, technology in modern conflicts that takes place in the dark, the time when most poachers sneak up uh, on their way on, on their prey. The new equipment allows for thermal imaging and high quality depth perception. And part of this donation, ladies and gentlemen, has included training of arrangers in order to ensure that they are able to use these, uh, this force multiplying piece of equipment very properly. With regards to the proactive anti uh, poaching measures and the use of technology, which we undertook, we did inform you that we are investigating the use of technology in various ways. The Mission Area Joint Operations Center in the Kruger National Park is fully functional. We did report that we are setting that up, and the Minister from Police of Police will actually speak to those issues as well. And the coordination between all stakeholders that are housed at MEDOC, and you will tell us about this difficult name, MEDOC as well, that has seen a good result of the Operation Rhino setup. Uh, which is set up to work function until 2018. Of course, we'll keep evaluating. It's not quite that 2018 is the magic time, but we have our timeline set to actually fight uh, to the level of our ability and the best of our ability. We have recorded a number of successes due to improved uh, uh, information sharing and part of our game-changing interventions that include disrupting criminal syndicate is, beginning, is happening. We are also pleased, ladies and gentlemen, to announce that joint situational awareness through electronic means and live streaming of information now informs in meantime, in time decision making, faster reaction, and more often proactive operation. And this therefore enables us to employ resources more intelligently and to be one step ahead of the poachers and their big bosses who are out there. Be that as it may, by Thursday on the 27th of August 2015. The number of rhino that we lost to the poachers was 714 for the whole country. Remember there were 749 of the year in relative to last year. All these 544 were poached in the Kruger National Park. Last year it was about 300, over 300 in the Kruger National Park. By last year, ladies and gentlemen, this time, the number of rhino laws to poachers were 716. In other words, relate and compare 749 of last year this time to 716 uh, for the whole of the country this time now. And with that, 459 in the Kruger National Park. This actually means that outside of the Kruger National Park, poaching has actually decreased in the rest of the country. If you were to take out Kula National Park, we would be saying that we are actually stabilizing elsewhere in the country. And I think the minister will talk to the efforts that have been done in the country. That then tells us that we still need to mount more efforts in the Kruger National Park itself. But we say, be that as it may, were it not of a measures that we have undertaken as part of the integrated uh, strategic management of rhino rhinoceros approach, the number of rhinos poached would be far higher, particularly in the Kruger National Park, given the escalation of the poacher incursions into uh, the park. Um, as mentioned earlier, ladies and gentlemen, it is encouraging that we have since seen an increase in the number of arrests recorded this year. And the July arrests inside the Kruger National Park, for instance, were the highest on the record for a single month. At this point in time, Chair, I think I'm going to give over to you to uh, formally ask Ms. Santiago to, to have um, a, a further presentation before we go further. Uh, can I proceed, please? Yes. Okay, no, thank you very much. Um, just, uh, just some uh, reflection on the question of uh, what has been happening on the, on the question of arrests and the convictions and so on in relation to the, the sketch of a rhino poaching. Um, we have outstanding cases, I want to start there first, we have outstanding cases, one case involving 1,840 charges 
um, an appearance is on the 28th of June 2016. It involves a Mr. Kronewald and 11 others. You, we also have a case registered uh, of uh, a RAS and 10 others on 380 charges of racketeering. In the next court date is the 14th of uh, September 2015. Um, another case of racketeering involves a big Joe and others, um, and it's 200, uh, sorry, 120 charges. And the next court date is the 28th of October 2015. Insofar as convictions uh, are concerned, we have had convictions ranging between three and five, three to five years. Uh, Elanga was uh, convicted to eight years uh, imprisonment for illegal dealing in rhino horns, and Allen was also convicted, uh, <coughs> given an eight-year conviction, and owe 150,000 uh, uh, rents fine for illegal possession, transport, and export of rhino horns. Uh, Mguenya and three others given a 15-year effective sentence for trespassing and possession of firearms and, um, and ammunition. A Vietnamese national, a, a Wu, who was sentenced to 10 years for illegal dealing and possession of rhino horns. An S. Vinguna for illegal possession, transport and export of rhino horns, a, given an effective four-year sentence. Um, we also have uh, a Sibui for illegal killing of a rhino, given a 15-year sentence. Uh, another Vietnamese uh, national uh, for racketeering and illegal dealing in rhino horn, five years plus one million rands fine. Uh, Elang and two others, illegal possession of rhino horn, given an effective four-year sentence. Lin illegal possession of rhino horn and given a, a two-year effective sentence and a hundred thousand rands fine. Mr. Mpete, illegal killing of rhino, six years. A hotel is the illegal killing and possession of rhino horn, a, given a five-year sentence. A, lastly, and we and others, illegal killing and possession of rhino horns, a, given a, a 15 year effective sentence. I would, through you Chair, also want to add that <coughs> a, <coughs> this work is the work that has been accomplished through, the, <coughs> through our division, the DPCI, a, a generally known as HOCS. <coughs> and we have been involved in the following international networks, in other words, our coordination also at an international level as well as regional and sub-regional level in addressing the transnational nature and character of this, uh, of this crime. We have been working with the Interpol Working Group on Wildlife, Fisheries and Pollution. We also are involved with Interpol sub-regional uh, structures as well as SADAC wildlife training as well as mutual, issues of mutual legal assistance, and that's basically a protocol uh, governing SADAC uh, issues. Uh, we are also involved with RMG Rhino Management Working Group, as well as Operation Cobra. That's, the, that's, that's, that's on the, on the coordinated, uh, coordination front. Uh, Minister Molewa asked me to explain a, a term referred to as Majok, MAJOC stands for Mission Area Joint Operations Center. Basically what it means is that it's coordinated work um, at an area level uh, uh, among stakeholders, uh, for an example, uh, to enhance our work of policing and dealing with issues of, uh, of rhino poaching. So that's what uh, it, it effectively stands for. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Jacob, uh, Minister Mapisa Nakula, uh, Chair. We, we have also reported, ladies and gentlemen, that we are also dealing with uh, uh, ports of entry and exit, managing the 
uh, movement in and out uh, at Port's area. Uh, previously, we have reported about this work, and we've also reported that we have decided and started placing the necessary forces that are experienced at these ports. Uh, just an update related to that. We now have a fully fledged team at the OR Tambo International Airport consisting of people from customs, uh, from border police, as well as from the uh, DIA Green Scorpions. Uh, our teams that are there are intended to really working to ensure that uh, non-compliance non with the National Environment Management Act, that's known as NEMBA, and its regulations are enforced in general and also detecting the trafficking of wildlife products in particular. <clears throat> there have also been training of a SSA, SAA cargo handlers on the detection of illegal consignments and with further training to be rolled out to other ports, uh, officials and operators as part of an ongoing program with the National Border Management Coordinating Committee. We are also happy to report, ladies and gentlemen, that we are in the process of deploying the Green Scorpions to KwaZulu Natal on permanent basis. And the Green Scorpions will be stationed at King Shaka International Airport, servicing the Durban Harbor, KSIA, and Colera Border Post. Again, here, uh, we will be led by the uh, Department of, I mean, the police. Uh, in this regard at uh, that area uh, and working with the, because this is actually a port of entry and for, uh, also border posts. And with the new border management agency now being operational, as you may have been told, uh, there's an operation that's called Operation Pyramid that has been launched in the Kruger National Park as a first phase of a work being done by this uh, BMA and as a pilot, it further measure which is a really a further measure that is intended to coordinate the efforts of different government departments in curbing cross-border crime. And this additional measure demonstrates a further commitment to safeguard South Africa's border. Related to managing the rhino population as one pillar that we have focused on, we would like to report back uh, indeed that, as we said in May, we had just gazetted the biodiversity management plan for rhino, rhinoceros for public consultation as a plan. And this plan is aimed at ensuring the long-term survival in nature of the species through the implementation of conservation management measures. And parts of the plan are already under implementation. For instance, the translocations that we'll talk about in a few minutes is part of uh, that plan. And as we announced in May, ladies and gentlemen, in the briefing that we've already referred to, a number of animals would, be, uh, that we said that the number of animals would be sold to private sector as part of our interventions to increase the rhino numbers. Now, Sun Parks has commenced with the translocation and delivery of white rhino from the Pura National Park to private land owners. And Sun Park this year will deliver 150 uh, rhinos elsewhere where they would be going, where they, they are sold. We did make a point, by the way, that uh, uh, related to this, we have ensured that all uh, systems are in place to ensure that there is good governance where this translocation is happening. This is, by the way, over and above what we reported to you, other number of animals that were translocated in 2014. This is for this year. And as part of evaluating the effects of sales uh, and poaching, Sun Parks will continue to conduct another rhino survey during September 2015. And during September 2014, a rhino survey using peer review scientific method recorded 8,001 to 9,290 white rhinos that are in the Kruger National Park. <coughs> And elsewhere in South Africa, the African Rhino Specialist Group, which is a, a, a specialist group of the uh, in, uh, International Union for the Conservation and Nature, which is a group called IUCN, reports that provincial reserves of 4,440 white rhino 
while private owners have 5,300 rhino. And the total South African white rhino population remains relatively stable since 2012 in the face of this escalating poacher activity. Now, we have with us here teams uh, from uh, Sun Parks that will talk to the issues about mortality rates and the birth and so forth. What we really is uh, pa painting here as a picture, a bigger picture, is that we are still stable and there's still stability in the numbers that we have in the provinces as well as in the Kruger National Park, even at the face of this escalating uh, 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 poaching. Let's continue to emphasize that should it not have been through because of this very important work that we are doing or fighting this uh, problem, we could have had a different situation. Now, as you all know, ladies and gentlemen, as poachers go for the bigger animals, the young ones are left orphaned and we continue to take care of these rhino. Now, since 2012, a total of 26 orphaned rhinos have been rescued from the Kruger National Park alone. Eight of these were happened during this uh, 2015. And these orphans will ultimately be released as part of a family group in semi-intensive and free-ranging areas. So, uh, coming back to the long-term sustainability uh, measures, uh, that also has got an element of working with our communities. We have long emphasized, ladies and gentlemen, that people are the cornerstones of conservation. And without involving our communities, we cannot hope to eradicate this problem. We aim to strengthen community involvement and participation in conservation through the much anticipated implementation of biodiversity economy strategy. By the way, we have finalized now and this will be launched by our present president, Jacob Zuma, and the upcoming biodiversity economy in Daba that will be announced just a date soon, around October, then about end of September, October. At the core of this strategy is a wildlife sector transformation agenda to ensure provision of sustainable alternative livelihood strategies for our communities, especially those that are living adjacent to the parks. And this will assist in curbing rhino poaching, we believe. The strategy seeks to promote inclusive economic opportunities reflected by a sector which will be equitable and dictate fair processes and procedures in the distribution of natural resources and access to markets as well as undertaking of projects that will assist in uplifting the financial and economic status of our people. Now, the species conservation, including the rhino, will form part of the strategic intervention. And as part of our strategy on uh, facilitation of community ownership of rhino, a successful case has been made to the handover of the rhino to the Mbluli Authority, which is a tribal authority that we spoke about uh, in, in Bumalanga in March uh, 2014. We are also working with two other communities in Limpopo province, as we have reported previously, that's Valipe and Sulwani communities who have been beneficiary of South Africa's land redistribution program. And both communities have undertaken a project to utilize this land for conservation. Again, we hope that uh, very soon we will be translocating or helping these uh, communities with stocking up of animals, probably even rhino. We don't know if they have uh, already had uh, assisted and be supported successfully to complete their fencing and the necessary uh, uh, security measures have been put in place. Also, as part of our community interventions, our departments of environmental monitors have been introduced in, uh, into areas facing high numbers of poaching incidents that has played a demonstrable role in combating this crime <coughs> through their work of educating communities in the area of benefits of conservation of the rhino protection. Remember that we have to work with communities, and these environmental monitors are working solely within the, 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 the communities and really making them aware. Uh, we now have a total of 1,460 environmental monitors deployed across the country through our environmental protection and infrastructure program. The next issue that we'd like to deal with is the game-changing interventions. Ladies and gentlemen, our efforts to address uh, the poaching involves various partners and parties. In May, we reported that 
there is a program called the Jeff Unit Rhino Project, which is under implementation. And in this regard, we'd like to report that as part of the interdepartmental collaboration between DEA and the South African Judicial Education Institute, and that is an institute that is within the Department of Justice, we hosted a judicial colloquium on biodiversity crime last week. And 150 magistrates from districts and regional courts across the country attended the event, which was aimed at raising awareness on environmental crime with a particular focus on rhino. And I think those who the reported back did indicate that this was very, very successful an event indeed, a, a, an awareness raising program. The next advanced uh, biodiversity crime scene management training is scheduled to take place from 7 September this year. And thank you very much, uh, Minister Jacob, because this is also being done with yourselves. This will also uh, provide an opportunity to finalize the filming material, which will serve as a visual supplementary training material for rhino crime scene investigations. And the prosecutor a training conference is then scheduled to take place in November 2015. The use of the game-changing technology has been further bolstered by the use of the 4x4 forensic mobile units uh, that were handed over to SunPass, to Northwest, the Department of Economic Development, Environment and Conservation and Tourism, as well as to the Limpopo Department of Environment and Tourism in, and the Mbumalanga Tourism and Parks Agency in May this year. This is a high-tech equipment, ladies and gentlemen, for crime scene management uh, we have reported about that already. And the use of these forensic trailers is in terms of our partnership with uh, the JEF program. And the trailers have been assisting with the effective management of crime scenes, particularly in outlying areas where the correct equipment required for on-scene forensic investigation is not readily available out there in the deep rural areas. Also on the matter of game-changing interventions, we are developing the Palaburua as a hub of for operations in the north, inclusive of the Limpopo National Park. As you know, that that's a park that we share with the Mozambique, where the fences were lowered. And we are collaborating with South African Air Link and Palamura Airport, at the Palamura Airport. This will hopefully cut the response time to poaching incidents in the northern parts of the park. Now, coming to the international arena, we have reported uh, some time on a continuous basis that we have been signing memoranda of understanding with different countries across the world. Uh, and we rely on collaboration and cooperation with international bodies, ladies and gentlemen, as well as the range states to support us in neutralizing the threat of organized transnational criminal syndicate involved in the illegal wildlife trade. We'd like, therefore, to report today that we have said previously that we'll sign an MOU with Cambodia. And this uh, has been signed. And it, in addition to the MOU signed, uh, thus far, on the 29th of May 2015, we signed uh, this, uh, it's actually the memorandum first that we have signed already. And this is the first agreement, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, to be entered between South Africa and Cambodia. The implementation plan, putting this in action, and the terms of uh, formal environmental agreement between the two countries is, was also signed, meaning that the actions are going on right now as we speak between ourselves and Cambodia actions that are aligned with the MOU. It doesn't mean that when the MOU is not in place, we don't do anything, but reality is that we need some kind of a formal agreement that's signed for actions to be taken. So Cambodia has been identified as a country which is actually a receipt or a transit and a receiving and a user country. The main focus of the MOU is to promote cooperation between the parties in the field of biodiversity conservation and protection, compliance with the Convention of International Trade and Endangered Species and Wild Forest for, is, is known as CITES and other relevant legislation. And the NSH form of cooperation include the exchange of relevant information and documentation on biodiversity, conservation and protection, promoting technical exchange, by the way also technology, technological exchange as well. A visiting experts group would also be coming in and out of country and interacting with us as South Africans and also on the other side as well. We'll also be dealing with the policy making and the regulators and law enforcers also interacting, organizing seminars, workshops and meetings and undertaking collaborative projects. 
Regarding Vietnam, which is also a user country that we identified, uh, through the awareness, uh, and this we have reported extensively previous on, but this is just an update today. Uh, through the awareness and demand management programs, we have seen more youth travel to our beautiful country to be exposed to issues related to the rhino, of, of conservation of rhino. And in June and July uh, of this year, uh, 22 Vietnamese school going youth uh, who as, were as actually winners of the Wild Rhino competition run at schools in Ho Chi Minh City embarked on a five-day educational wildness, uh, wilderness training uh, trail facilities by the Wilderness Leadership School in the Trifuwe Ufolosi Game Reserve in KwaZulu Natal took place. They were here, we saw them, they were widely, it was widely reported, extensively reported throughout the country about their presence here. They also participated in educational workshops where they were assisted in developing strategies on how to share their message of conservation with their communities out there in Vietnam. Remember, we are not quite fair with the language of Vietnam, so they will do, we're just uh, familiarizing them with messaging and so forth. They are now, as we speak, doing work in Vietnam in terms of demand management related issues. With regard to Mozambique, there has been further engagements between our Mozambican counterparts, and in particular here, the Minister of Environment, since May 2015. We had signed the Memorandum of Understanding. Now, lately, we have signed the implementation plan, uh, which is actually under implementation already, uh, and actions are being taken. Related to that, a significant element of this plan was the joint launch of the specialized fauna bra uh, bra bravaria anti-poaching unit at Masingir in the southwestern Mozambique in March this year. I'm sure you have also heard about that, uh, which really is a very, very impress impressive uh, groundbreaking beginning of movement forward by Mozambique. And in support of the Frona Bravaria anti-poaching unit, working with the Peace Park Foundation under the Rhino Protection Program, we'll also be delivering anti-poaching equipment to our Mozambican counterparts and Minister Ferreira will receive this in a time that will be determined and very soon, because we are ready from our side as well. And in the same event, the Peace Park Foundation will deliver a small plane called the Savannah Light Sport Aircraft, because we need the Mozambicans from their side to actually begin to act, as we have had complaints in the past that there's not been quite concomitant action on the other side of Mozambique. So this work is beginning to introduce movement forward in that regard. It's something that we've needed uh, for a long time. And in support of Mozambique deliver, developing social economic opportunities associated with the life, wildlife economy, we completed the second phase of wildlife uh, other than the rhino introductions. Uh, and that entails supplementing certain plane, planes games species in the Lipopo National Parks. In other words, to stimulate tourism uh, facilities, operations for employing the locals there in those tourism facilities. This is what we are intending to do so that we strengthen, further strengthen, help strengthen the Mozambican tourism side for employment creation so that we actually uh, deal with sustainable livelihoods for those communities on the other side. And with regards to set resettlement of villages, we'll report progress in the next briefing. We have reported that three villages have already been moved. As a time we met them, they were appointing a uh, some service providers that are bigger in nature that will be able to move the remaining four villages outside from inside the park and faster than they had done with the previous three uh, villages. South Africa and Mozambique also submitted a joint CITES report as we had promised that we would do. Uh, as per the decision uh, that was taken at CITES which took place in, um, in uh, uh, Thailand uh, two years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, in the fight against uh, wildlife crime, there are decisions that are taken at different conventions whereby the state parties exercise their rights in pursuing those decisions. It is acknowledged, therefore, that sovereign countries with whom we closely cooperate in this campaign uh, also make independent decisions in the context of their nationality and nationally determined priorities and needs. This is why South Africa respects the decision of Mozambique to dispose of its rhino horns and elephant ivory stockpiles. But after a large seizure of a rhino horn in Mozambique, Mozambique, the DNA samples were collected by the rhino testing 
from all available horns that we found and brought back to South Africa for analysis. And from the samples, ladies and gentlemen, that we collected, collected we have a basis for, 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 for prosecution. We are mentioning this point because we know that there is there's been no information or not adequate information to South Africans about whether we'd be able to uh, prosecute on the basis of the ones that have been banned. We are reporting, therefore, that we have taken from the available ones that were in front of us, we have taken those samples and they are here. And they will then be able to allow us prosecution. With regards to China, the People's Republic of China, we know that we have reported the signing uh, of a wildlife uh, conservation implementation plan that was needed. We have since done signing on the 23rd of March when the delegates from China were here in South Africa. And that's also uh, in the area of law enforcement, compliance with CITES, technology transfer, and other relevant legislations and conventions. And in this year of China in South Africa will also be during this September month, be hosting a delegation from youth uh, from China to increase the, their awareness of wildlife management and crime in South Africa, as well as to raise awareness of the plight of uh, the rhino and other wildlife species. We have reported, ladies and gentlemen, that we will be hosting a COP17 of CITES, uh, which is a meeting of parties that will take place here in South Africa. Venue has been concluded, reading process has been finalized, and that will be held at the Sutton Convention Center in Johannesburg. Uh, from the 24th to the 17th of October, uh, sorry, 24th September to the 5th October 2016, which is next year. And the department would like to invite interested parties, this time I'm talking the department, uh, parties to the register to register for participation in the preparations of CITES at COP17 and to submit draft proposals for consideration by the National Scientific and Management Authority on or before the 15th of September. Uh, 2015. And the draft proposal must be based on Resolutions Conference 924, 9.24 of CITES, which is a criteria for the amendment of Appendices 1 and Appendix 2, which governs the status of a species and impact on trade and on a species and information related to this that can be as accessed through the Department of uh, a website, Departmental website. If you want to know anything related to the matter, get into the Departmental website. But we will also convene the consultative meeting uh, as soon as all stakeholders are registered for dealing with their proposals. And I would like to conclude, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, by just indicating to you that the committee of uh, inquiry that we have appointed is still hard at work. We will report further work in relation to that uh, as, uh, in, in due course. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to point out that the poaching figures are really not a cause for despondence. However, were it not for the interventions that we have outlined, they could not, they could have, uh, they could unfortunately be far worse. Of course, we have to do far more if we are to stop the slaughter of these animals. And this requires continued collaboration, teamwork, and strengthening strategic partnership as we are doing right now we are intending and will definitely work together in collaboration to stop this uh, poaching. That is why we are here today, ladies and gentlemen, before you as a team. And I'm convinced that as our successes have shown, collaboration can actually yield a <coughs> desired fruit. What gives us perhaps the greatest cause for hope is that communities are now more than ever play a vital role in preserving our natural heritage. And I want, in conclusion, to call on all of us as members of the media here to aid us in the fight against rhino poaching. For you too, are our allies and partners. And given the magnificent work that has been done and that we have been doing and also that which has been done by the people of South Africa, be they the environmental ambassadors, our green scorpions, rangers, police, sun park, scientists, and so forth, all of you, let us give, give credit where it is due. And together with our colleagues in the law enforcement sector and prosecution services, we are doing our utmost to disrupt the organized multinational syndicates where we find them. 
With the help of all South Africans, we as a collective reaffirm our commitment to the cause that is common to us all, which is really saving our rhino on our watch, not on our watch that our rhino will be perishing. Thank you very much. Thanks, Minister.